to the NEA uh, in, on Capitol Hill, so you're all very fortunate to have a member of Congress who really understands the role that arts play and the importance that arts play in your communities and in the economy. Um, to go over some of my handouts, you, we have our 2015 grant guide. This is going to go, has all of the grants I'm going to talk about today and more. It also has our deadlines highlighted and it also has some of our other programs and partnerships. Uh, and also in the back it highlights some of the reports that we put out. Um, we do a lot of research on arts and culture. One of the grants that is not in there and that I will not go over is a new grant. It's called Imagine Your Parks and this is the press release for it. It's a new grant that we have in partnership with the National Park Service. They will be celebrating their centennial in 2016, and we will be celebrating our 50th anniversary starting in September or October. Um, so this grant was sort of a joint effort for both the Arts Endowment and the Park Service to really have projects that are celebrating the National Park Service. So it's in the Park Service, around the parks, about it. It's very unique, different, one-time only sort of grant. So um, definitely look into it because uh, the Park Service, which I'm learning about, actually covers a lot of historic sites and a lot of other community organizations that are all around the country. Another thing we have is a press release on three recent reports that we um, released earlier this year. Um, one of them, two of them actually focus on public participation in the arts. So why are people you know, going to art events or why aren't they going? What is their sort of motivations? What are their barriers? We hope that for art organizations that's helpful for you to understand you know, who and why people are participating in the arts and how you can sort of improve that or reach those audiences that may not you may not be reaching. Um, it also highlights a report uh, that came out with the Department of Commerce that measures the impact of arts and culture on the GDP. It is uh, close to $700 billion, which makes that larger than the tourism industry and larger than construction. So we also hope you find that helpful as well when you're applying for grants or trying to get your community involved in really understanding the role that arts are playing. And then lastly is this Tell Your Story, which um, I'll get into sort of when we talk about our 50th anniversary. Um, so to get started, who is the National Endowment? Who are the National Endowment for the Arts? We are an independent federal agency, um, and we are mandated to sort of reach all Americans with the arts. And to this is sort of a new message, a new thing we have. So I'm still new on the creativity and participation in the arts. Um, but our, our mission really is to advance artistic excellence, creativity, innovation for the benefit of individuals and communities. The NEA is the largest single funder of arts in the country. Um, to just jump right in, um, who do we fund and who do we not fund? Um, as a grant, so this slide sort of gives you that. On the right, you'll see the different types of organizations we fund. Arts organizations, nonprofits, uh, local governments, so mayor's offices. You do not have to be an arts organization to receive our funding, but you do have to be a nonprofit. We don't, and things on the left, things we don't fund, general operating support, construction. Um, we don't fund individual schools, but if you're an individual school, you can partner with an eligible entity to receive funding. Um, we don't fund construction, but we do fund the design of that construction. So we may not fund renovation. We don't fund renovation either, but we would fund the design of that renovation. So sort of things to think about. And then educational institutions, again, pretty much just nonprofits. These are our 14 disciplines. Um, your project can be a single discipline or it can be a combination of all of these disciplines. And this is where 60% of our funding comes through one of these disciplines. And we have specialists in all of these disciplines. Um, see, these are some general requirements for our direct grants. So you do have to be a nonprofit at the time of application. So you could have yesterday not been a nonprofit, but as long as by you know midnight on the deadline you're a nonprofit agency entity, then you can be eligible. You must have a three year of three year history of programming. It does not need to be arts programming. So if you have you know after school programming or something like that, that would count towards your programming history. So it doesn't have to be arts related. Um, you do have to have a one to one match um, of non federal funds. So if we give you a grant of ten thousand dollars, you do have to match us with ten thousand dollars. 
And that can be in a variety of ways. It can be an in-kind donation. So if somebody donates the use of a theater space, you know, that could count towards your match. If it's raising the money through ticket sales, and it can be a combination of all of those things. And we can provide guidance and help with that. On average, our grants are actually matched one to nine. Um, so it kind of shows you the one economic impact our grants have, and also there's not a shortage of um, ways to sort of find that match. Um, the last two bullets are pretty self-explanatory. Please do your reporting um, and paperwork, and please do it on time. Uh, our grant review process, so you have an understanding of how who's looking at your applications and you know how that happens. The first level is the panel process. These panelists are people out in the field, in your communities, they're experts, they're diverse in terms of you know ethnicity, expertise, geography. We're always looking for panelists, so if you're interested in serving on an NEA panel, please let us know. Um, we'd love to have you uh, serve on a panel. The next sort of level is the National Council on the Arts. Uh, similar to NEH, we have an advisory board that is appointed by the president and confirmed by the US Senate. Um, they then review it, and again, also diverse in terms of expertise, uh, ethnicity, demographics, geography. They're um, just a group of, right now we have about 18 people on them. And then the chairman has a, the final say. At every level, uh, there's sort of two lenses that your application is being reviewed under. One is artistic excellence, and the second is artistic merit. And sort of the gist of what that is, is we only fund excellent art, and, we, and will it have an impact on your community or an impact on the field, and will you also be a good steward of taxpayer dollars? Um, these are our main funding streams. There's grants for organizations, grants for individuals, and partnership agreements. I'm going to focus a lot on the grants for organizations um, in this presentation, but if you have questions on anything else, just let me know. And our first grant is our Artworks grant. These are our sort of largest category. Uh, these grants cover a broad range of projects, which include, and all 14 disciplines fall under this grant category. But some of the things that we fund through this are commissions, residencies, rehearsals, workshops, performances, exhibitions, publications, festivals, training programs, arts education. So there's really a breadth of things that you, we fund in this program. Most of you will probably be applying for through the Artworks program. Um, some of the outcomes that we are looking for is creating new art. So for instance, a public sculpture or a mural. Um, public engagement with diverse and excellent art. That could be, again, sort of a, a festival or an exhibit. Lifelong learning. This is outside of the K through 12 arts education grants. So it, arts ed is very focused sort of on uh, curriculum and arts education, K through 12. Lifelong learning is really about engaging a broader audience, intergenerational. How do we keep people engaged in the arts all the way, you know, from sort of cradle to old age? Um, so an example could be, you know, a, a lecture after a performance. Uh, the next thing is strengthening of communities through the arts. Um, again, sort of how do you how are you using arts and culture to, you know, for li improve livability and sustainability um, and improve in your communities. Um, and these, again, go from $10,000 all the way up to $100,000. And again, these are all matching grants. So Challenge America, um, this used to be called Challenge America Fast Track. So if you're familiar with our grants, it's the same grant. It's just we shorten the name. Um, again, this is very similar to Artworks, uh, the same 14 disciplines, the same outcomes. They're just a little smaller. All of these grants are only $10,000. And also, there's one additional requirement, is that you do need to reach an underserved community. And there's a definition of underserved community in our grant guidelines that you need to read. You don't have to serve all of those um, underserved communities. You do just have to show us that you will reach one of those underserved communities. Um, this is a very good first time grant. If you've never applied for an NEA grant before, I would encourage you to maybe look at this for the first time um, and this be your sort of first NEA grant. Um, because it's a little simpler process and we offer a little bit more technical assistance um, on the sort of the entire application process. Um, our next grant is Our Town. These are our largest dollar amount of grants. Uh, and this is a relatively newer grant. 
These projects are really all about what is, we call creative placemaking. Um, and creative placemaking is really about how you're using arts and culture to stim stimulate your local economy, revitalize your community. Um, some of the requirements for this is that you do have to partner with an art organization and you do have to partner with a local government entity. So your mayor's office, your county office, your municipal office. Um, I will pause and call out Marty, um, who's sitting right up here, because we funded a project in Portland through our town a few years ago. Um, Marty's with Art at Work, and the project was called Meeting Place, and it, they partnered with neighborhood organization associations, and Marty can actually explain it later if you're interested, um, with neighborhood associations to really engage the community. Um, they were in diverse communities, and when they looked at community meetings, people weren't attending, or it wasn't really reflecting the diversity of those communities. So how did they use the arts in different ways to really engage those people and incorporate them and include them in the community more. Um, this is a new website that we launched where you can actually uh, read about Meeting Place, the Portland projects there. It's interactive, it's really cool, it's sort of all about, you, you scroll over and you can see the really different types of diverse projects that we have funded through our town and what sort of learn more about what creative placemaking is, so if you're still sort of not sure what that means. Another cool project that we funded was in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. They had a steel town and the steel industry left and so they had these large um, abandoned steel stacks. Um, it was sort of a blighted neighborhood. People weren't walking by. Uh, with an Our Town grant, they turned the steel stacks into sort of a public art sculpture. They later opened a performing arts center and it's now one of the most visited places in Pennsylvania. It's really cool if you haven't been to the steel stacks I encourage you to check it out. But those are all sort of ideas of Our Town grants. Our creative writing fellowships. Um, so we, uh, like I mentioned, we no longer fund individual um, artists. Thank you, Culture Wars of the 90s. But we do fund creative writers, <coughs> and we also fund translation fellows. Um, the creative writing fellowships are pretty self-explanatory. It's creative writing. Um, but the translators um, are, are, I think, are pretty cool. Uh, it's the idea behind that is that Americans wouldn't have read, you know, Gabriel Garcia Marquez or Anne Frank's diary, for that matter, if they had not been translated into English. Um, translating is a very tedious um, process. It takes a lot of time, and it's not very lucrative. Um, so we support that through our translation fellowships. So if you know any academics or colleges or translators who'd be interested, please let them know um, about this um, grant opportunity. I also encourage you to check out our website. There's a publication called The Art of Empathy um, that our literature <laughs> division put out, and it really talks about the art of translating. You know, you can't, it's not a, if you have an ancient Chinese poem, you can't exactly literally translate that into English. So there is an art to translating, um, but it's a very interesting publication. Um, the other 40% of our funding goes to our state and regional partners. Um, so hopefully you are all familiar with your state art agency. It's the main arts commission. I really, if you don't already have a relationship with them, I encourage you to reach out and really build that a relationship with them. Um, our state art agencies are great. We work with them closely. They have lots of other funding opportunities um, and they could really be a strong ally for you. Um, in addition, we have our regional art organizations, our RAOs, and even though they're regional, so for instance, South Arts, you know, is in the South, covers the Southern states, and uh, Mid-Atlantic Arts is, you know, covers the Mid-Atlantic region. Even if you're outside their geographic region, a lot of them do have national grant opportunities. Um, so again, I would encourage you to sort of explore our regional art organizations as well, because they will have other funding streams and other funding opportunities that are different from ours. Um, the application process. Uh, so this is the Grants of, as Caitlin mentioned, uh, if you're applying for a federal grant, you must go through Grants .gov. Um We do have some specific NEA requirements that are a little different, um, which I'll sort of go over. Uh, our website's on the right, in case you're not familiar with it. This is Grants .gov. Um So the top bullet is our unique requirement. We do strongly encourage you to turn in your application to us 10 days before your grants.gov application. Uh, we're, we're doing this to help you. 90% of the time when somebody has an issue, it's with grants.gov. And if you're calling us the day before your grants.gov application, there's not really a lot we can do. So we do ask that you turn your, uh, 
turn in your application to us 10 days before your grant um, duck of application. Um, if you're not familiar with grants.gov, things you're going to need is to get your DUNS number, your SAM number, um, make sure you have a point of contact. Uh, these are all things we encourage you to start your grants.gov application now and stay on top of that. Um, just one hint of a word of advice is uh, get your IRS records and have them accessible when you're registering with grants.gov. Your records need to match exactly. So if your IRS records have, your street is 18th Street Northwest and you t wrote out Northwest on your IRS records and you type in NW on your grants.gov, they'll kick it out and say that there's not a match. So it's just easy for you to have it right there accessible and match that up. Have a good point of contact in your organization who is checking their email and on top of that. And then call grants.gov because they have people who will answer the phone. Um, NEA Go. This is a separate um, website, which again is sort of unique to us. Um, this website, NEA Go, was put together by the Western State Arts Federation. It was made specifically for the NEA. Um, this is where you will submit a large part of your application. This is where you submit your work samples. Your work samples are critical to your application. It is the primary way that our panelists and our reviewers are assessing artistic excellence. So your work samples should be recent and they should be relevant to your application. And I've been told that NEA Go has improved, so if you <laughs> applied last year and you had some issues, hopefully they've worked out some of the bugs. Um, here are just some sort of helpful hints, you know, please contact us. We, all of our information is on our website. We are very accessible. Our specialists are great. We cannot formally review your application ahead of time, but we can offer a lot of guidance over the phone and informally. So if you have questions, we, we want you to be successful at your grant application. So any ways that we can help you, you know, we're there to do that. Read our NEA grant guidelines. They have changed from last year. The new guidelines were posted at the beginning of the year. They're very detailed and they're long, but pretty much all of the information you need are in those grant guidelines. And again, they have changed this year. So even if you've applied for grants in the past, um, make sure that nothing has changed. Um, watch a webinar. We have a lot of webinars on all of our grants. So if you're interested in an applying maybe for a new grant, you've applied for Challenge America in the past, and maybe you want to try an Artworks grant or an Artow grant, watch one of those webinars so you can really understand what we're looking for and what the process is like. And, and also, look at our past grants. If you're not even sure, you have an idea of a project you want to do and you're not sure which category to apply for or which grant, um, sort of look at some of our past grantees and see you know, how we have funded them. So I'm just gonna go into a few of the other things that we are doing um, at the NEA. Uh, the first one is Blue Star Museums, which we are about to launch. So if you're a museum and you want to be a part of our Blue Star Museums, please let us know. Uh, Blue Star Museums is a partnership we have with Blue Star Families. And what it is is from Memorial Day all the way to Labor Day, uh, for participating museums, they offer free admission to active <laughs> duty service members and their family. It's one way to sort of give back to these service members in, um, through the summer months. It's important, especially in, in summer months, they're on vacation, but they're also transitioning to new communities. So again, if you're not a Blue Star Museum and you would like to be one, please let us know. Um, sort of other work we're doing with our service members is we, the National Endowment for the Arts has a healing partnership with the Department of Defense. It's called our NEA Healing Arts Partnership with Walter Reed. Uh, we are using the creative art therapies to treat our service members suffering from PTSD, traumatic brain injury, um, and other psychological health issues. We're currently at Walter Reed Hospital in uh, Bethesda, and we're also expanded to Fort Belvoir in Virginia. We are hoping to uh, expand to other facilities. If you recently, the National Geographic <coughs> actually had an issue where they featured a lot of the masks that the service members creative, is, it's pretty awesome. Uh, another grant opportunity is the Big Read. This program was sort of in response to uh, the decline in reading among adults and, uh, and youth as well. Um, this, these are community reading programs. So they have to happen in a, an accessible community like a library or museum. They need to happen uh, during hours when families can attend, so it can't happen during the workday or the school day. But they can, you can get really creative. There is a selection of books, so like Fahrenheit 451 is one of the books. We're trying to add new books because some of them are a little dated. 
Um, you can't just buy books and hand them out. It does have to be a community sort of um, event. So a reading, a public reading or a performance or an exhibit or a festival, but a, another funding opportunity called The Big Read. Um, our next thing is our Poetry Out Loud, which is our national high school poetry recitation. We actually just finished wrapping up this year, and we were so happy to bring our main state poetry winner to Ms. Pingree's office last week, where she met with her. Um, poetry Out Loud started under our chairman, Dana Joya, who was the Poet Laureate, and it was really about bringing poetry back into the classroom and teaching sort of our young people about great poetry. So the students have to learn poems. One has to be pre-20th century. Um, they can pick them from the poetry. We partner with the Poetry Foundation. They pick this a poem. They have to you know, understand it, and then they recite it um, you know, publicly and are judged on sort of their understanding of their poem, their recitation, their enunciation, their pronunciation. Um, it's really great. We provide a lot of curriculum support to teachers so that they can really incorporate it with the Common Core and with their already busy schedules. It's been very successful. We had, I think, about 465,000 students participate this past year. We just celebrated our 10th anniversary. So if you are a school or a teacher who's interested in this program, please check us out. The winner, like the high school student who wins all of Poetry Out Loud, um, is awarded $20,000. So it's a big deal. Um, the schools also received some money. Um, the last grant opportunity is Shakespeare in American Communities. Um, and it basically is Shakespeare Productions in American Communities. So if you're interested in putting one on and like some funding, Shakespeare in American Communities. And like I mentioned, we are celebrating our um, 50th anniversary starting this year. Um, so there will be lots of events going on. And one of the things that we're doing now is we're sort of requesting for you all to tell us your art story. So if you've listened to sort of NPR's um, StoryCorps thing, it's kind of like that, um, hopefully a little cooler. Um, so you can go to our website and you can either write a letter or write your story, how the arts have impacted your life or what your organization has done in the arts or what, how the arts have impacted your community or how the NEA, maybe you got an NEA grant and it changed your life. Um, we want to hear about that. You can upload videos or audio. We're actually going to have some members of Congress also putting, are sending us videos as well. Um, and then once we launch, start, kick off our 50th anniversary, we're going to use these sort of videos so that everyone can sort of see what the arts are doing in our American communities um, and really hear from these communities where the arts have made a difference. So I really encourage you all to pick up one of these and hopefully we can hear from you to sort of hear what the arts have been doing. And lastly, here's my information, um, and I'll be around to answer questions as well. Um, but also, I put our website up really big because we have a lot of information on our website, and hopefully you all can visit that and use that as well. Thank you.